Good morning. morning. Welcome. Welcome to First Christian Reformed Church this morning. We gather in this house of worship to praise the Lord. And it's a little chilly this morning, but that's um, hopefully going to be fixed soon and uh, in time for our next service. But the part is on order, and uh, it'll hopefully be replaced soon, and we'll be able to have a little bit warmer situation. But we welcome you, and we're glad that we're together. If you're joining us online today, we welcome you to that, and we pray God will bless you. Um, There are a couple of announcements as we open this morning. Um, First is from our snow committee. They um, are responsible for getting the word out if we can't have a service or there's something we all need to know on a short notice. And uh, they just want to remind you, if you have changed your phone number or if you've updated something, please let Greg Riebkus know. He's our clerk, and uh, we can make sure that we keep our list as current as possible. And that's true of emails, too. If you've changed your email, um, we'd appreciate it. Just let Greg know, and then we'll be able to communicate uh, more easily. Also, next Sunday, because it's the fifth Sunday of the month, we have a combined service with our brothers and sisters at Wellsburg Reformed Church, and it's their turn to host. So next Sunday's service will be at Wellsburg Reformed uh, Church, and their uh, service time changed. Uh, It's 9.30. So please make note of that, and we'll meet next Sunday at Wellsburg Reformed at 9.30 for a combined service. A worship service, and in, in the light of that, uh, we will not have our normal Sunday school um, and adult Sunday school classes here at church uh, next Sunday, so please make note of that, but we'll have our combined service next week. I'd like to open with a few words from the Psalms. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. And if you've been following some of the images that the satellites and the telescopes have been giving, just amazing uh, views of the planet Jupiter and other um, celestial things. And here the psalmist says, they're declaring the glory of God and the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, They display knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. Let us stand and receive a word of grace from the God who created all this amazing universe. Grace to you and peace. These are from this amazing creator God. They come to us from the Heavenly Father, the Father of lights, and in Jesus, our Savior and our dear Lord, the Master of our lives, and through the work of God and His Holy Spirit working in our hearts. Amen. Let's sing and we'll join our voices to the voices of the celestial beings and and creations. And our hymn is, God is here. It's 246 verses 1 to 4, and the words are on the screen.
Let us greet each other in that spirit of Christian love. And today, if you feel like sitting a little closer, that's totally all right. <laughs> Morning. <laughs> I feel sorry for my wife. She's just sitting on her own. <laughs> Let's join together in prayer. Thank you, Lord. You're so good to, to us, your children, and we have joy today. Joy because we know you're on the throne. You're the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and, and we've come into this house and gathered in this place to bring our worship to you, to praise your name, to, to ascribe worth to you. Help us, Lord. Help us to pay attention to you. Help us to listen and to know and to, to realize, uh, to feel your spirits moving us forward and, and to know where you would have us go so that we may follow and give us the courage and the energy and the strength and the insight that we need to follow you in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's uh, look to God's spirit for his blessing in our hymn is 235. We'll remain seated and sing the three stanzas, Spirit Working in Creation, 235. a desire that we have in the heart to bring honor to God and he helps us to know how in his word. I'd like to share from 1 Corinthians 13 uh, or later in our message or in our service we'll hear from 1 Corinthians 12 so this gives us a little bit of context to what we'll be hearing in a few minutes. If I speak in human or angelic tongues but don't have love I'm only a resounding gong 
or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but don't have love, I'm nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but don't have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It doesn't envy. It doesn't boast. It isn't proud. It doesn't dishonor others. It isn't self-seeking. It isn't easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love doesn't delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what's in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection, as in a mirror. Then we'll see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I'll know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain. Faith, hope, love. But the greatest of these is love. And we go to our loving God in our time of congregational prayer. And just by way of update, uh, one of our elders, Elder Bill um, Jansen, is in Liberia this morning. And he is uh, helping to distribute the gifts that uh, we have given for the container that was shipped to Liberia. And uh, we can give thanks that those things have arrived. And he's been um, updating me a little bit the last few days on, on the goings on there. And they're off to a good start. So we'll give thanks to the Lord in prayer uh, for that. I also have a friend um, who uh, works in mission in the Philippines. And he asked me this week if I could pray for his wife, Charlotte. Charlotte has a lot of medical issues right now. So I said to him, his name is Joshuano. I said, I'll, I'll mention you in prayer on Sunday. And uh, also my dad is going to be having some results from his tests um, on his uh, cancer tomorrow. So I hope that that goes well for him too. So let's go to God in prayer. The Lord and our God, we come to you the the source of of blessing, the source of creation, the source of providence. You take care of us. You, you guide us. You're with us through the warm and the cold. Lord, we thank you for heat. We pray that uh, the system will be fixed this week, that we can enjoy um, more comfortable temperatures in church. Um, we also thank you for the many people who are uh, working on it and for each one uh, they have a place and they have gifts and talents that they're using uh, to serve and thank you for them Lord uh, this past uh, week we were reminded of uh, the ministry of Dr. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr. and we pray that you will uh, help our land to be a place of um, racial equality and we pray that you will help us to respect each other and to live in harmony together. And we know there are differences in uh, race and, and gender and, and other things too, that you will help us to see one another as created in your image and uh, respect each other as, as a consequence and as, as an outflow of, of what you have done in creating us. Thank you for diversity. Uh, Lord, if everything was the same, it, it wouldn't be uh, nearly as interesting. And thank you for uh, the diversity in your creation. Lord, we pray for those who struggle this morning, those who are too poor to pay their bills, 
and, and who can't pay their heat bill or their electric bill or water bill, we pray that you'll help them to get what they need. We pray for those who are hungry, uh, that they may receive food that they need to sustain themselves and to work and, and live. Lord, we pray for those who are unborn. We pray that our country may respect life, that there may be um, this joy and welcoming of life when it is on the way and, and when it is uh, arrived. Lord, we lift up a Bill as he's working in Liberia this morning. Um, we thank you for the believers there, and we pray that our gifts may have been a blessing to them. Um, may they use them well, and, and thank you for them. Lord, we lift up Charlotte Uano, and we pray that she may feel better. She's had medical issues for some time already, and pray that you will resolve what's going on there and, and help her to heal. Uh, we pray for good test results for Dad Mulder tomorrow, and that uh, the cancer will be, um, ha have an encouraging report that the numbers will be down rather than up and that he'll be all right. We also pray for Timothy Christian School, the cause that we have for offering this morning. And thank you for the ministry of the school, and we ask that you'll bless the school in uh, these chilly January days that there will be uh, much good in learning and growing and working together for good things to happen. Um, bless the ministry there too. In Jesus' name, we ask these things. Amen. Brothers and sisters, mention the offering this day is for uh, Timothy Christian School, and if the Lord leads you to support that ministry, um, feel free to give. The plate is in the front and the back, and we'll put the proceeds to support the ministry of the school. Let us uh, stand, and it's good to move a little bit, generate some heat, and our next hymn, Speak to Me That I May Speak. It's 754. Let's uh, sing the five stanzas. Uh, Lord, speak to me that I may speak.
to welcome the children forward for our children's moment. Morning, Logan. Okay. Well, good to see you guys. Well, I brought a couple things I want to show you today, but first I'm going to tell you a little story. Um, when I was younger, I used to deliver newspapers. Now, do you guys know what newspapers are even? Yes, yes. Today, people get news in different ways, but there are still some newspapers around, and I would deliver newspapers to my neighbors on the block, and at the end of the month, I would have to collect, and it was usually $5, and um, that would get you a newspaper each day during that month. And I remember collecting uh, on a house on Alice Street in Zealand one time, and a man said, hey, I've got something I want to give to you. And he gave me this um, thing that, it, it's a Bible holder. And I still have this Bible holder. It's in my house, actually, right now. And we use it to hold a Bible, because the Bible is special. And we can take it off from there, and then if we want to read it, we can do that and put it back in the Bible holder. And it was about oh, a week or two ago, I noticed there was some extra wood that I had in my garage, and, and the thought came to me, it would be neat to have another one of those, and I could put it in my office at church. So I cut up some of the wood there, and I made this Bible holder. And you can put a Bible in there. I'll see if I can get one, and I'll show you. See how this goes right in here. And sometimes in England they say of something, it has pride of place, and that means that they put it in a special place because it means something special to them. And so this is going to go on my desk at work, and the Bible goes in there because God's Word has pride of place. It's special, and I want to make sure that. Uh, that, well, that's one way to, to just remind me that this is a special book. But Mr. Fred, who gave me the first one, Bible holder, I hope he would appreciate what I did. And I was reading this Bible, and it says in this Bible, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against you. And so I thought, even though the Bible has a special place in this Bible holder, it needs to have a special place in my life and even down in my heart. And I think that's true of all of us, that God's Word should go deep inside of us. And that will make a difference when it's placed even down into the heart. So I thought, well, make sure to listen. When the Bible is read, make sure to listen carefully and think to yourself, now, what God tells me to do, I want to do it and to obey what he says. So, thy word have I hid in my heart. That's the special place, uh, the place where we hold God's word in life. Shall we pray? Lord, help us to put your word down deep where it makes a difference and to listen well when the Bible is read. Help us to put it uh, into practice, to want to obey whatever you call us to do. And um, bless us today in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you guys can have a little bit of candy. I was thinking I maybe should have just given out hot chocolate or something today to keep you warm, but we'll figure something out there. The Bible passage, as uh, we mentioned a little bit earlier, is 1 Corinthians 12, and it's verses 1 through 11. Let's have a brief prayer. Thank you for your word, Lord, and as we try to put it deep within, help us to be listening with receptive hearts, with a desire to serve and praise you. In Christ we pray, amen. 
And this is the good word from 1 Corinthians 12. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I don't want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagan, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who's speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them, and in everyone, it's the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there's given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit. And he distributes them to each one just as he determines. I think I'll use it as a paper holder, too. Well, this past week had dinner, and some of the things Melissa and I talked about are common things. What'd you do today? And I like to ask that and learn um, what was going on in Melissa's life uh, that day. And if she was working at the hospital, what they did at the hospital. Maybe there was uh, a surgery that was done. Uh, maybe it was a cataract and a cloudy lens on a person's eye taken off and a clear one put on and it's her job to get ready for those procedures so the instruments need to be clean and in the right places and and if there's a, a knee replacement there's a different set of instruments for that or if there's a, a foot surgery different instruments for that and it's just a matter of knowing what's on the agenda what's on the schedule and then getting things ready so that that can go smoothly. And I think for us as Christians today, uh, we're going to reflect on what's on the schedule that God has for us. And how can we respond in a way that, that fits into that, that helps those things to go well and, and to, to, be smooth, uh, to go smoothly. Um, so we look at what God is doing, what's on his agenda and his schedule, his calendar, and then how can I fit into that? Um, it's exciting because God is bringing people to Christ and away from what isn't right to what is right. And Paul in 1 Corinthians 12 noted about somehow or other when they were pagans, they were led astray to mute idols. And I found a, a picture of an idol in the city of Corinth still there today. If you see some of the idols or the statues of, of antiquity, uh, whenever their lands were conquered, it seemed like the conquerors liked to lop off the heads of the statues or the, the, uh, the hands or the feet. And I suppose one thing that did was show that uh, those, those statues uh, couldn't defend themselves and Paul would say, true, those, those gods aren't real. Um, they, they're mute idols. They don't really uh, save people who look to them. But there is a God who does save those who look to him. And that God is Jesus. 
And it's by the Holy Spirit's work in the world through people like missionaries and, and ministers and Christians uh, shining the light of Jesus Christ that people are brought to the good confession. And that good confession is three words. It's the first confession of the church. It's the earliest of all of the confessions. And the simplest, Jesus is Lord. Jesus, the one born in Bethlehem who grew and taught and who was put to death on a cross for my sins and your sins. This Savior who rose again from the dead on the third day, this Jesus is Lord. He's the God of the scriptures. And I believe that and I profess that and I believe that that is the work of God's spirit in me, bringing me to see that and to echo that and affirm that and, and to proclaim that. Jesus is Lord. And, and let's say that together. Jesus is Lord, and that's our confession as Christians. But then we also uh, have to fit into that, that truth, and to respond to that truth in a, an appropriate way. And the Lord helps us to know how to respond to the truth that Jesus is Lord. Um, we, we, we affirm it, we bear witness to it, but the Spirit does more. The, the Spirit helps us to respond by bringing gifts into our lives, gifts from God. The Spirit just loves giving gifts. And he gives lots of gifts. And there are lots of diverse gifts that he gives to, to brothers and sisters in Christ. And he wants us not only to be thankful for those gifts, but to use them. And, and he guides us into using them. He says, it's for the common good. So we, we want to receive what God's Spirit brings us by way of gifts, but then use whatever gifts he gives to us, and there's a whole bunch of them, for the common good. And uh, Paul quickly adds in chapter 13, oh yeah, be sure to use them in love too, or else they won't amount to anything. So we'll look at these things together and look at some of the gifts that God gave to the Corinthian Christians and, and their life it gives us a picture of what church life was like in Corinth. He says, you know, to one, God's Spirit gave the message of wisdom. And, and I don't think Paul is trying to say these are the only gifts that the Holy Spirit gives Christians or that every one of these has to be present in the same way that it was present in Corinth in order for a church to be faithful. Um, but these are some of the gifts that Paul thought of when he thought of God's spiritual work among the Christians in Corinth. And, and one of them was wisdom. And for a Christian, wisdom centers in Jesus. Jesus is the wisdom of God. And to another, he says, God gives a message of knowledge um, that they share for the common good. Maybe they teach something. Maybe it's um, a, a Bible study. Maybe it's some other subject that's of use in uh, the church for the good of the kingdom of God. Uh, to, to some he gives that message of knowledge. To some he gives faith. And, and other commentators say, Paul is probably not thinking about, about saving faith here because he gives saving faith to all Christians. But he's talking about faith. And later in 13 he talks about you know, faith to move mountains. Maybe it's... it's Belief in a certain cause, in, in, a, in a cause that I'm willing to work for, and I'm willing to perhaps see it through, you know? Um, I believe in helping, uh, you know, people in Liberia, and so we, you know, give things to help them, and, you know, Bill had that faith. He's going to, to see that through, and he went there, and he's, he's bringing the gifts to the people there. I think he has that that faith that this is a cause that's worth uh, worth doing and uh, worth it for bringing praise to God and, and helping the body of Christ in Liberia. Paul listed some other gifts too. There are some who are, uh, can heal. You know, they notice that you know, there's an illness and they know how to fix that. So they do. Others have miraculous power 
And in the early church, the apostles sometimes did miraculous things. And he goes on to talk about some of the other gifts. There's prophecy. There's some has the the understanding of what God's word means for us, and and they bring that to bear on the community of faith for the good of the community of faith. Others have the gift of tongues, and I try to understand that in the context in chapter 13 he talks about angelic tongues and, and about human tongues. Uh, there's different languages in this universe and we don't uh, always understand them if we only speak one language but not another. But Paul adds some have the gift of interpreting those tongues and I think he wanted to be sure that whatever tongues were, were shared in the context of the Corinthian church if it was uh, ecstatic heavenly speech or if it was uh, a human language that not everybody understood that th those words were interpreted so that people could understand and, and apply it um, and that that was a gift too to be able to interpret the tongues so you know reading these things we get a little bit of a picture of what church life in Corinth was like how God's spirit showered them with gifts and they were Putting, to put those gifts into use for the well-being of the whole. But Paul was also concerned. He did not want someone to look at another person who had a different gift and get depressed because they didn't have that particular gift and somebody else had it and think, well, I guess I don't have a place in the body. So Paul later in the chapter says, if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body, it wouldn't for that reason cease to be part of the body. But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every last one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but there's one body. The eye can't say to the hand, I really don't need you. The head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. And then later Paul concluded, now you, Christians, are the body of Christ. And each one of you is a part of it. Each of you, it's so exciting. We are a part of of the body of Christ in this world. And God's Spirit has showered gifts. We're all different. We all have different gifts. But we are a part of the whole and can use them for the good of the whole. Now, sometimes we scratch our head and think, oh, Lord, I wish that I could have this gift or I, I wish I could have that gift. And, and maybe in that, God is leading us to pray for it and he'll, he'll respond and say, here it is. Or maybe God is going to say, well, that's one of those gifts that needs to be developed. And so uh, I've given you some raw talent. Now I want you to work with that. I, I've given you some music in your heart. And, and take those lessons and, and practice those songs so that uh, you will develop that gift. And then you can use that uh, to, to be a blessing in church. Share your voice or share your, your instrument uh, or whatever to be a blessing uh, among my people. But Paul then adds, use them in love. You can't just have the gift and even using it, be careful to use it in love for the good of the whole. 1 Corinthians 13, if I speak in human or angelic tongues, whatever one it happened to be, but if I don't have love, I'm only a resounding gong, kind of like or a clanging cymbal, like our, you know, it's just not going to, to help as it should. If I have the gift of prophecy and if I can fathom all mysteries and all the knowledge around there, if I have a faith that can move mountains, but if I don't have love, I'm nothing. So yeah, the gifts are there. Use them in love. Use them in love like to conclude this morning with just observation of just the diversity of gifts 
you know, in the body of Christ. And the, the diverse things that God has given uh, to us. Um, and I'm sure some of those with these gifts would say, oh, that's nothing, you know. But it's something, and it's something important in the body of Christ. Um, discernment, you know. Where should the church go? Should we, should we repair or replace the whole system? Sometimes I get mad at our heating system because I think, oh, you know, let's get a whole new system. Well, wait a minute. You know, maybe we can fix it and make, a, make it work better uh, that way. You know, there, there's, the Spirit gives discernment to know what to do. Um, Roland got our uh, old snowblower that hadn't been working in years and years and years. He got it working. And um, we can use that now. And, and, you know, maybe the best thing is, is to sell it and free up some space and, and put the funds towards uh, ministry and, and some good in the church. Um, maybe we can, I was thinking, maybe God, you know, got this thing running so we can use it in a ministry capacity. If you have a, a driveway that uh, you think, I cannot do this anymore, and, and let me know. Maybe we can work something out, have a little snow, snow ministry uh, for a while. But it's just good to th get into the habit of thinking of life as a gift, and the people I know, the, the work that I do, the, the relationships God has given me, this is God's work in my life. And he wants me to use these gifts and these opportunities that I have for, for the good of his kingdom, and for the upbuilding even of the church. If I go to, go to school and I'm learning some lessons, uh, maybe how to write, or learning math lessons, or... or music. You know, these are all gifts that can um, eventually be, be given in the context of the church. Um, we may, Writing a sermon or using our, our math skills to, to keep an account, you know, uh, in good shape. Or, um, you know, whatever the gift may be, music, you know, playing the organ, playing the piano. Um, for the good of the body of Christ, we have all these different gifts. Uh, I remembered I was able to drive, and uh, so I used that gift to, to uh, well, help support my family a little bit when we were in Holland. I still drive once in a while and for Lyft, and you get to know people. And it's interesting because some of them are Christians, some of them are not Christians. And um, it's interesting because you kind of get to know what people are facing. And uh, at our last council meeting, um, we were talking about what's some goals for the year. And, and I've been praying about that and thinking about that. And here's, here's one I'm going to share with you, and it's, it's a big goal. It's a goal to disciple someone in Jesus Christ, to get to know somebody new, bring them to the Lord, and disciple them. Now, how is that going to happen? Praying about that, thinking about that. What are the contacts that I have a pastor have with other people? You know, that, are, that aren't Christians. Most of my life I spend with Christians. So I have to find some way to, uh, to get to know somebody who's not a Christian and to find a good way to share Jesus with them. And uh, that's my challenge that I've, you know, my goal for this year, to disciple somebody in Jesus Christ. Yesterday I did something that I tried to do for the good of the body. I don't know today, it's not feeling totally there, but I, I took my cross-country skis and I made a cross-country ski trail around the cemetery and then around the parsonage. And um, this morning I was glad to see the trail's still there. It's, it's drifted in a little bit in places, but it's still there. And I think to myself, that's what I tried to do for the good of my body. I tried to exercise. I I took a spill once yesterday, but I got back up. And, and I'd say, you know, God has given a trail now. And how can I use that for a blessing to you? And I'd say maybe this morning, hey, if you feel like coming on out to the parsonage and bringing your cross-country skis, um, try the trail that we made. It, it's kind of a cool trail. It's about a 15-minute loop to go once around, twice is a half hour, which for me is probably a good, 
good little exercise session. Um, there'll be a snowshoe trail there too. I, I'm going to put that out probably today. Get a snowshoe trail, and and if you feel, if you say, I, I've got size 13 feet, but I don't have skis, you can use mine. Uh, you can gladly strap them on, and and I'll promise I won't take any pictures of you. But we've got a little trail going there, and we can use that for the good of the body somehow or some way. And uh, there's just all kinds of options if we start thinking of what we have as a gift to be used for the good of, of others. Those are kind of small examples, but here's, here's one that, you know, is obvious. You know, we have folks that had the ability to set up how to video a service. And during the pandemic, you know, what a gift that was to us as a community of faith. Uh, to be able to have a link to church through that time. And they we're still using that, you know, to, to keep their, that link going and uh, to keep worship uh, offered and available to people who aren't able to be here. So, you know, there's lots of gifts out there. There's a wide range of gifts. Our challenge today is to ask, now, Lord, what gifts have you given me? What service, what work, what relationships do I have that, um, that I can make a difference for the good in the body of Christ and to do so in love? Um, let's pray. Father in heaven, you're a giving God. You shower gifts on your church. Thank you and help us to use them in loving ways for the good of the body of Christ. Um, in Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Let us uh, sing, uh, and we'll use our musical gifts of voice and instruments. They'll know we are Christians by our love, because that's how we're going to use these gifts. 256, let's stand and sing the four stanzas.
When we express our faith in the next song, the Apostles' Creed set to music, it's 782, stand to sing. That little word amen means so shall it be. And that is true of the blessings that God gives to his people. May the Lord and his Holy Spirit bless you and bring all kinds of spiritual gifts into your life. May he keep you. May he cause his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May he turn his face and his gracious love towards you and give you his peace. Amen. Blessed is the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. 257. One, two, and four, a closing hymn.